I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. We will talk about graphs of specific functions today. Function looks like y equals x to the power of r. And uh, we are not fixing r to any specific value. We will try to examine how this function looks for any different value of r within a certain range, of course. And we will assume that x and y are real numbers. Before doing that, let me just spend a couple of minutes on what is x to the power of r, where r might be different. Primarily, we all know what it is if r is integer number. Obviously, x to the power of n is x times x, etc. times x, n times. Everybody does know that. Now, what about rational? Uh, power. What if it's x to the power of p over q? What is this? Well, let's think about it this way. Let's call it z. We know that x to the power of n is equal to x multiplied n times. So basically, what I would like to say is that these powers are added. Like, for instance, x to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 2 times x to the power of 1. 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Now, in a more uh, general case, you can say that x to the power of m plus n is equal to x to the power of m times x to the power of n. Because this is x, x multiplied by itself m times. This is x multiplied by itself n times, so together they're multiplied m plus, one, m, plus n times. So this obviously is <coughs> a, a property of the power uh, of the function of power. Now, if this is true, let's do it in this particular case. What if I will have z times z, etc., times z? Q times. It should be equal to the z to the power of q. Right? So these powers are added together. Now, what is a z? Z is x to uh, p over q, which means if x p over q is multiplied by itself q times we will get z to the power of q which is x to the power of pq to the power of q that is another property now what is this So the first property was x to the power f plus n equals to xm times xn. Now, what is x to the power fm multiplied by n? Well, that's very simple. That's x to the power of m to the power of n. Why? Obvious. This is x times itself m times, right? m times. Then we have to uh, raise it to the power of n, which means multiply by itself n times. So this is repeated n times. So n times within the brackets, times n brackets by itself, so we have m times n x repeated. So that's another property. Now, based on these properties, this is equal to x to the power of p over q times q, which is x to the power of p, right? So, what I'm talking about right now is basically a definition. What is a rational uh, power? What does it mean to raise to a power which is a rational number p over q? As usual, how do I define it? I define it in such a way to retain the basic properties uh, which power has for integer 
uh, number. So these are basic properties. So I retain these properties. And if these properties are correct for my newly defined x to the power of p over q, I have to have this equation. So what does it mean if the same number repeated q times is equal to another number? Well, in a different um, uh, symbolical symbolical representation, it means that x to the power of p over q is equal to root of q of x to the p. Why? Because this is repeated q times, and we get x to the p, power of p, right? So what is each of these? That's the definition of the, of the root of, uh, of the, the q's degree. So basically, what we can say that this is root of the degree q from the x to the power of p. That's a definition. It's not really anything which I have proved. It's a definition, but I base this definition on certain properties of uh, power of real numbers, uh, of integer numbers, so these properties are retained. So that's about rational. And one more thing about the power. Negative. What if I have x to the power minus n? Let's think about what this is. Well, um, again, based on this property, I can say that x to the power of n times x to the power minus n should be equal to the x to the power minus n plus n. Minus n plus n is 0. x to the power of 0 is 1. x to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Always, by definition. Again, to retain these particular qualities. So what follows from here? that x minus n is equal to 1 over x to the n. Again, that's the definition of the power with a negative uh, number, the power. So we know that x to the power of p over q is actually root of the power of q from the x to the power of p. And x of minus n is equal to 1 over x to the n. All right. So these are just properties which are supposed to be known to everybody because these are kind of the definitions of the function power for any particular um, value of the power. What I did not actually talk about here is what if uh, the power is any real number, including irrational. Um, but again, you understand that every irrational number can be represented as a um, as a series of approximations with rational numbers. <coughs> so basically we can define for every rational number a series of, uh, every irrational number, a series of rational which are tending to this. So basically I don't want to go into these details too deeply, but uh, the function uh, x to the power of r is defined for irrational number as a limit uh, as, as the result of this, as the limit of this tendency, if you approximate with rational numbers. Okay, um, enough of that, and let's talk about the graph of this function. Well, let's start from the very, very simple thing. First, r is equal to zero. So we have y equals x to the power of zero, but we know that this is always one. Right? x to the power of 0 is over 1, which means that the graph will be it will be this. It goes through the point 1. So for any x, the function takes the value of 1, so the graph will be this horizontal line. OK. That's it. Solved. For any other, let's say to the first degree, or to the second degree, 
or to the power which is any rational number which is not equal to zero, or negative, or whatever it is. X being equal to zero will always result in Y equals to zero. So any function which we will consider from now on will have this uh, power not equal to zero. And if it's not equal to zero, then the function for x equals zero, y will be equal to zero. This is, for instance, for y equals x to the first degree, or just plain x. Well, if y is equal to x, then for every value of x, y is equal to exactly the same thing, right? So they're always, so the point where they're crossing will always be equally distanced from both uh, axes, which means that the whole thing will be on it bisector of this angle. And everybody knows about that. Everybody saw this graph, y is equal to x. And most likely, everybody saw as y is equal to x squared, which I'm going to do next. OK. x squared. Well, for every value of x, which is, let's say this is 1. This is function y is equal to x. All right, now you try to build the function y is equal to x squared. Let's think about it this way. Um, if the value of x is greater than 1, um, x squared is always greater than x, right? Like 2 squared is 4, greater than 2. 3 squared, 9, greater than 3. Any value which is greater than 1 being squared result in the value which is bigger than the original one. <clears throat> so if I start from here, from any point, and I will try to make the point, if this is x, what is y, which is uh, x squared, it will be much further than this, than this uh, y is equal to x line. So points will be somewhere there. If it's here, somewhere here. And obviously, if x is equal to 1, x squared will be 1 as well. So this is the point where both y is equal to x and y is equal to x squared have exactly the same value for x equals to y, 1. But after the 1, x squared grows faster than y is equal to x. So it goes something like this way. Now, before 1, from 0 to 1, any number which is from 0 to 1, if you square it, it will be a smaller number. The result will be smaller. smaller. For instance, 1 half. Square of 1 half is 1 quarter, smaller. 1 third. Square of 1 third is 1 nine, smaller than 1 nine. So basically, these values will be below y is equal to x. And at 0, they meet again. So the basic graph is like this, for x is equal to 2. Now, what will be in the negative part? Well, if x squared is a, an even function, if you remember, um, because negative number being squared is result, it results in the same number as positive, the corresponding positive. So it will be symmetrical here. And this is parabola which everybody saw. OK, great. Now, let's talk about a bigger power. What's bigger than 2? 3, obviously, if we are talking about integer numbers. We will return, by the way, to rational and negative, etc., a little bit later. Now, 3 is bigger. Power is bigger than 2. Now, what does it mean? It means that for numbers which, has, which are greater than 1, they will grow faster. Again, 2 cube is bigger than 2 square. So as we raise into a bigger power, the numbers which are greater than 1 are bigger. So here, x cube, now this is y is equal to x square. Now for cube, it will be even higher. You know what? Let me just take this equation out of this. 
to the T. So we are considering X T right now. So this is y is equal to x, and this is y is equal to x squared, and now y is equal to x cubed. So as I said, starting from 1, for all the numbers which are greater than 1, it will grow faster. So it will be even higher. That will be y is equal to x cubed. And whenever we are going, uh, whenever we are drawing the, the graph between 0 and 1, um, we have an opposite effect. If you have a bigger power, then the number which is um, in this particular range will become smaller. So x to the power of 3 for, let's say, x equals to 1 half would be what? 1 eighth, uh, which is smaller than x squared, which is 1 fourth. So what I'm saying is that in this particular area, the x cubed will be below than x squared. But again, in x equals to 1 and x equals to 0, all of these functions are the same. For 0, it's 0, it's this point, and for 1, it's 1, it's this point. So it's like a knot. If you will consider all the different graphs for all the different powers, in this particular case, they're tied together. And in 0, they're tied together. But from 0 to 1, those with a bigger power go more, um, go, go smaller, and uh, those with a bigger power, they will be uh, positioned higher. Now, what about the negative x? Well, y is equal to x cubed is a uh, odd function, because it changes the sign if you change the x. So in this case, it will be centrally symmetrical, right? So this will be this way. This is minus 1, minus 1. Now, you obviously understand that the bigger the power is, the more uh, graph will be, uh, the, the lower graph will be in this area, and the higher in this area. So this will be y is equal to x to the fourth degree. And x to the fourth degree is, again, an even function, so it goes here, like that. As power is increasing, our graph becomes smaller and smaller here. But then, since, this, since the graph still has to cross um, the point 1, 1, it will be steeper uh, growing in, in the area which is close to 1 and then even steeper growing further up when x is greater than 1. And as far as the negative numbers, if the power is integer, if it's a, an odd integer, like 3, it will be centrally symmetrical. If it's an even, like 2 or 4, it will be symmetrical relative to, relative to the y-axis. So these are about positive integer numbers. Okay. Now, what about rational numbers which are of p over q side, uh, type? Well, first of all, let's think about odd or even functions. Since this is a definition of x to the power of p over q, obviously if p is odd, then the function is odd, and if p is uh, uh, even, then the function will be even. Well. That's almost true, because now the whole thing depends on q. Consider if q is, uh, let's say, 3, and x to the p is, let's say, a um, negative number, because x is a negative number. Well, so the cubical root of the negative number exists, and it's negative. But what if it's q equal to 2? It will be a square root of something which is negative. Square root does not exist among the real numbers. We need complex numbers to resolve it. So traditionally, when we are talking about general function of y is equal to x to some power, and the power can be even rational number, um, 
usually people do not consider these graphs uh, in the area when x is less than 0, than a negative x. So usually, all these graphs are considered for positive x, so we don't have this problem of um, dealing with uh, when the function is defined, when the function is not defined, etc. Because as I was saying, if you say, have something like y is equal to um, x to the power of 3 seconds, for instance, then this is basically square root of x to the power of 3, and if x is negative, you cannot really extract the, the, the square root of it. So it's not a defined function of this type, it's not defined on negative x. So for um, some kind of a simplicity purposes, all these functions, y is equal to x to some power, are usually considered as defined uh, with positive x. So we don't have these problems with negative, so forget about function being odd or, or, or even, it is uh, defined when uh, the power is integer, but it's not defined when the power is rational. It's not always defined, so we don't consider it at all. So, if we have completely cut out the negative part, then everything becomes actually much simpler. Because if you have p over q, then let's say it's uh, y is equal. Let's say y is equal to, as I was saying, 3 over 2. Well, this is 1 and a half. It's greater than 1, but less than 2, right? And um, if you will start thinking about this graph, if this is the graph of y is equal to x to the first degree, and this is the graph parabola y is equal to x squared, 3, 2, 3 second, which is 1 and a half, it's in between 1 and 2, so the graph will be in between. So the graph will be somewhere here, in between these two guys here, and in between two guys here. So it still, um, it still has this uh, pseudo-parabolic shape. So it's uh, a little bit lower than 1, the, the y is equal to x in this particular area, and it's above y is equal to x in the uh, area of x greater than 1. And it grows to infinity faster than y is equal to x, but slower than y is equal to x squared. So this is basically in between these two things. And that's how it is defined. Now, the only thing which we have left out is when the power is negative. And that's the last component of it. <coughs> Let's do it for integers first. It's easier. And then we will say that the rationals are in between the corresponding uh, integers. So we are talking about x to the power of minus n, let's say. But you know that this is 1 over x to the power of n, right? So let's draw this graph, and then we'll see what happens. And I will consider only positive numbers. <coughs> As I was saying, it's um, easier so we don't have to deal with when the function is defined, when it's not defined. It's always defined as long as x is greater than 0. All right. So first of all, we will do something which I was talking about during one of the lectures on the graphs. I will use, I'll, I'll just try to divide one to another. So I have function x to the nth degree, and I will divide one into it. Okay. We all know that this is one, one. This is y is equal to x, and this is y is equal to x to some to some power of n. Whether it's two or three or whatever, it always goes below y is equal to x in this particular interval and above and faster grows uh, when x is greater than 1. So what is 1 divided by this number? So this is my number, and I have to divide 1 by 8. First of all, y cannot be defined when x is equal to 0. We cannot define by 0. We divide by 0. That's out. However, as x tends to the 0, 
actually ends tends to the zero as well. So one over x to the n will go to infinity. So obviously the function will go to infinity as it approaches. Let's put it this way. As function approaches, uh, as x approaches to zero, one over x to the n will go to infinity. Now, if x is equal to, n, uh, to, to, to 1, then 1 to the nth degree is 1, 1 over 1 is 1, so the function still goes through this point. You remember this is the point 1, 1, which ties together all these graphs, it still ties them together, even these types of function with a negative n. So here we have the function which goes here. Now, what's further? As long as um, if x grows from 1 to plus infinity, um, obviously x to the nth degree also does it, and 1 over x to the nth degree goes to, to, to 0. This is 1 over an uh, infinitely increasing number. So this goes to 0, so the function will go this way. Um, I'm not sure this is the best uh, drawing, but Probably I should, let me try again. I'll just draw it a little bit low, lower scale, and that would be better. So 1, 1, it's too big for me. I will do it this way. This is 1, 1. This is my knot. So this is y is equal to x. This is y is equal to x to the nth degree. And here we have from plus infinity, it goes to 1, 1, and then got, goes down to 0. This is my y equals to x to the minus n. So if I divide 1 by this function, I will get this function. Again, they meet in 1, 1, and then the x to the minus n goes to, uh, to 0 as x goes to infinity, and it goes to plus infinity if x goes to 0. And by the way, this curve in some cases is called hyperbola, um, but there are different hyperbolas. If, x is equal, if n is equal to 2, uh, that's a quadratic hyperbola, and... Uh, if, x is, if n is equal to 1, it's just plain hyperbola. So in this particular case, it's 1 over x or 1 over x squared or 1 over x cubed or whatever it will be, a plain hyperbola or, or quadratic hyperbola or cubical hy hyperbola, etc. But now, let's think about how the function behaves with different negative n's. What if my n is greater? Let's say, let's compare... Um, uh, n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2. So, if n is equal to 1, I have y is equal to 1 over x. But if n is equal to 2, it will be 1 over x squared, right? Now, what's faster goes to 0 if my um, if x goes to infinity? Obviously, x squared grows faster to infinity, so 1 over x squared will be faster going down to the 0. So if this is x to the minus 1, for instance, then x to the minus 2 will be faster going down to 0. And opposite, when we are discussing uh, this interval between 0 and 1, the function will be going to infinity faster, which means it's going above the y is equal to x. So this is y is equal to 1 over x squared. So the, the whole hyperbola, I will still call it hyperbola, but quadratic hyperbola in this case, is turned a little bit. It's growing faster to 0 and faster to infinity. So if this is how the 1 over x looks, then this is 1 over x squared. 
and this is 1 over x cubed, etc. So it will be faster growing there and faster going down to 0 here. So that's the difference. And again, when n is not an integer number, but some kind of a rational number, we always um, can, can say that the curve will be very much like those with integers, just shift it a little bit, um, or, or turn it a little bit, if you wish, um, depending on the value. So all uh, graphs of y is equal to x to the minus any rational or even irrational number, when this number is negative, they are all kind of hyperbolas. So it's completely different group of curves, if you wish, because you can always say that the positive uh, uh, power, they're all going this type of thing. And for, for negative, correspondingly to, uh, they're, they're all hyperbolas. They're completely different. Um, now, I did not yet discuss, I did actually have an example of uh, a rational number which is greater than 1. I had 3 over 2, remember. This is something which I probably have to separately maybe show if y is equal to x to 1 half. Well, obviously, it will be um, the function which will be uh, in between y is equal to x to the 0 and x to the 1. But in this case, it's not exactly clear. Um, so let me just draw it separately, and you will understand what I mean. Um, first of all, again, using these things, We start again with y is equal to x to the first degree. And as I was saying, all the uh, x squared, x cubed, etc., they all go this way. They are below y is equal to x here and above there. This function, if you consider it, it's uh, symmetrical in, in some way. Um, the graph will be this way. Um, now, why? Because obviously, again, in 0 and 1, it takes the same values, uh, 0 and 1, correspondingly. Um, now, as far as x, uh, this is basically a square root of x, right? So if you consider something like um, x is equal to 1 quarter, then y is equal to 1 half, right? So. If x is equal to 1 quarter, which is somewhere here, this is also 1 quarter, 1 half is greater. So as you see, the function will have the value above this um, bisector. So that's exactly what I meant when I draw the function this way. Because in this interval, from 0 to 1, this function will be above y is equal to x. But then, as the x grows, square root of x is smaller than x. So the function will be below. It will still go to infinity, but slower than y is equal to x. So if you compare y is equal to x squared and y is equal to x squared and y is equal to x to the 1 half, they are kind of symmetrical, but symmetrical relative to this bisector. So all these functions with a power less than 1, they will have this type of shape. And the smaller uh, power, uh, it's still positive, but smaller close to 0. The more, the steeper it will be in this, and closer to 1 is equal to, closer to, to this particular line um, uh, uh, when x is greater than 1. Well, well ba basically that concludes all these uh, functions. We have considered uh, greater than 1 powers. They will be of this shape. Equal to 1, it's this. Uh, less than 1, but still positive, it's this shape of the graph. And whenever we go to a negative territory of the power, that would be hyperbolas, which are 
somewhere here in this particular area. So these are all the graphs of x to any power of r. And again, what's interesting is they are tied together in these two points. 0 and 1, they're all the same. In 0, it's 0, and in 1, it's 1. Um, well, except 1. When r is equal to 0, in this particular case, it's a completely separate, and the function is horizontal 1. All right, basically that concludes my uh, problem number 4, uh, to graph all the... Uh, functions of y is equal to x to the power of r. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.